Yo, what's up? Today I will be testing another electric scooter. Yes. So this is the Deco Super Ace. It's a new variant. Well, the newest, newest of the crop from Deco. So uh, for you guys who don't know Deco, it's a Thai manufacturer man, uh, located in the southern, uh, well, the midden part of um, of Thailand. It's called Nakhon Patom. And uh, I've been testing, actually, okay, the background here. I bought a Deco, it's called Sophia, for 40,000 baht. That was last year. Um, that cost, that is about 1,200 euros. And I've been using it, I'm so happy with it. And now the manufacturer and the store where I bought this from, they lend me this one, which is the, the Super Ace. So what's new about this one versus the old one that we are currently using is that the Sofia has 1000 watt motor. This one has 2000 watt motor. It's supposed to go up to almost 100 kilometers per hour. And then the Sofia has, man, there's so many insects here. Oh, shit. But the Sofia has um, about 1.2 kilowatt hour battery. This one has over two kilowatt hour battery. So I'm going to do a range test today. And then if you want to know more about this, you have to watch the next episode where I review the whole um, scooter also versus the Sofia. So that's going to be interesting because there are some pros and cons with these two. Mainly, this one has bigger battery, but the battery can't be taken out. Whereas the Sofia allows you to take out the battery. You can even bring a spare battery. It's eight kilo. Then you can swap it. <laughs> this one cannot swap, but it's faster and it has more range. So let's do the testing. Okay, a quick tour here. Here's the ignition. Uh, I will show you more tomorrow when I do the other episode. When you switch it on, you will temporarily see the odometer, 905 kilometers. And then, and the voltage, 79, 0 0.0 volt that one always shows and then when you hold on the P button then it's ready then you see the trip meter so I will not stop well I mean I can write down at 905 yes in case I switch it off accidentally and then uh, if we switch it there you see here we have a little compartment for uh, storing stuff uh, this one actually has a USB it's pretty cool and also he has it has an LED there Wait, how is this again? Oh, I think I have to be switched on, right? There, there, yes. So it has a little, <laughs> a little LED light there. At night, you can actually see stuff here. <laughs> Here's the breaker. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The, the old model actually doesn't have USB charging here. So nice. And I, I'm going to bring the charger, of course. So this is the, the Deco charger. Let me see. Uh, it's yeah, 79.8 uh, volt, 10 amps. Oh, okay. Um, and unlike the previous model, this one cannot swap the battery. It's too big. Uh, so we're just gonna leave it there, like that. Okay, good to go. Holy shit balls! The PM 2.5 levels are pretty high today, so I'll be wearing the mask. This N95 mask. I'm good to go. Okay, by the way, as for voltage, it says 79 volt right now. And I tried to do the math. Um, if it's 19 cells in series, uh, that would be about 4.15 volt. But it's weird, it's unlikely that it's 19. 20 cells in series so sounds more um, plausible because then you have a 4, uh, 4 times 5 uh, array. And it means that if it's 20 cells in series, then we have only 3.95 volt. So maybe they've designed it to be that low. And then it means that if it goes down to three volt, um, then that's 60 volt total for the pack. So uh, the seller told me that, yes, you should, you should consider charging at 60 volt. So we have to pay attention to this one then. All right, first checkpoint. We have been driving for, um, open this, 12.2 uh, kilometers. And um, <laughs> I noticed something that the speedometer is way off. So I did a check with uh, Google My Tracks. I think it's deprecated now. But um, when I cruise at 45 kilometers per hour on the speedometer, 
the real speed is actually 35 kilometers per hour. So we had to cruise at 45 on this beta because on the previous test, I also cruised at 35 GPS speed. So yes, we still have 77 volts. This is gonna take a long time. So right now we are outside of a, a PT gas station. There is just so much pollution here, man. This is so sad to see. Oh, and you know, there's, there's supposed to be a mountain here. Dai Luang, we can't see it. What the heck? So, all right, uh, the sun is up. The sun has been up for a while. And we have to hurry before the sun is too strong and it's too hot. So let's get going then. Okay, another checkpoint. You know what? I had some suspicions because the speed is so much lower than what it's supposed to be, right? Um, so the speed is actually uh, 0.77 of the real speed or well, the other way, yes. So when you see the speed here, multiply by 0.77, you get the real speed. And then uh, I checked, I did some check here. At, at the trip meter, when the trip was 14.5 kilometers, I started uh, my trucks again, and I drove for 20 kilometers according to the trip meter. But then the real distance was only, let me just check again here. The real distance was only 15.6 kilometers and that is actually also 0.77 so it corresponds with the speed. I wonder if they have some weird dimensions on the wheel or whatever but now we know that whatever result we get we have to multiply by 0.77 to get the real distance. Okay let's keep going then. Okay, a little checkpoint here. The trip meter now says 70 kilometers. That's 54 kilometers real distance. And we still have 73.5 volts left. I suspect the voltage will drop like a rock towards the end, but already now, 54 kilometers. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Oh, we have done 78 kilometers now and we are down to 70.5 volts. Oh, there's just one problem, which is that uh, my butt hurts after driving so long. Uh, but I'm not butt hurt. <laughs> oh man, that thing is a beast. 80 kilometers. That's the distance from from Xiangdao to Chiang Mai. Uh, so we're still not done yet. We still have to drive. Yeah. I, Man, this thing, it only has a little over two kilowatt hour and it can drive that far. It's just, I'm so amazed how little energy it has compared to how far it can drive, man. I also like the tail lights. Yeah. Oh, well, by the way, it has no license plate, but I have all the required documents and insurance. It's for test purpose. So in case you guys are wondering, Oh, okay, let's keep going. Okay, we're back here. This is a restaurant called Sene uh, Dai Luang. And a little checkpoint here. So 126, that means 97 kilometers of real distance. Oh, let me see, can you see that? 97 kilometers real distance and we're down to 65 volt. I think it's time to bail out now because this is probably where it starts dropping fast. So we still have lots of pollution. Yes. 156, uh, what is it again, the unit, but it's the PM 2.5. Oh, yes, okay, almost done now. Let's head back to uh, Changdao. Ooh, we are now back in Changdao. This is uh, one of the market uh, places nearby. And yes, it was actually a very good call to bail out at 65%. I'm going to show you what happened now. So. The trip shows 130, which means that we have done 100 kilometer. But you see, we lost two volt after just three kilometers. So it means that uh, I guess we can go just a few more kilometers before we are down to 60 volts. So this is it then. Let's just go home. 
Oh look, it's blinking now. <laughs> this is the end. Yes. So yeah, we shouldn't go much lower than this. But let's just run into this. There's a there's a um, parade. Um, oh, I think that's. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, some some person, some guy who passed away. There's a picture of him. So, I don't know the whole tradition about this, but you see, we have some monks here, and then the okay, oh, they are pulling something. Huh. This is not something I see every day. I think I have to ask my mom how this stuff works. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it's run by a generator. Wow, oh, there's a not big speaker. <laughs> huh. Okay. Huh. Interesting, but let's go home. Oh, yes, we are back home now oh, in the sanctuary. So this time I didn't run out of juice somewhere in the bush there. But uh, if you look at the trip meter now, it says 131 kilometers. So that means the true distance is 100 kilometers. This is what you can expect. I don't dare to go much lower than this. Uh, it will probably shut down soon if I keep going. So 100 kilometers. Now you probably wonder, uh, what about if I cruise at 60 kilometers per hour? Then, okay, I don't feel like doing it because there's so much schmutz and dust and PM 2.5. I'm gonna die before I finish. But uh, I think if you cruise at 60, you should at least be able to drive 50 kilometers, right? Uh, but again, the reason why I drove so slow is because this is the club you usually use this for city and average speed should be around 35 kilometers per hour. So this one has twice the range of the previous model I tested, the, the Sofia, Sofia or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, what I think about it, you know, I, I actually like it, the way it rides, the power, well, I, have to, I haven't really tried the power yet. The USB port it has, all that stuff. But this, this appeals more to men than to women, I guess. But um, I had to point out something, which is that, you know, a fossil uh, motorcycle or scooter, like, like the one we have over there is a Yamaha, Yamaha Fino. Uh, it usually consumes about two and a half liters per hundred kilometer. And it has a four liter tank. So it means that on a full tank, you can go about 150-ish kilometers, but that's probably way faster. You probably cruise at 60 kilometers per hour to get that one. So best, best case, if you cruise at 35 like I did, I don't know, just wild guess, you might be able to drive 200 kilometers with a Fino, right? On four liters of gas. But four liters is roughly 40 kilowatt hour of energy. Uh, this one is two kilowatt hour, by the way. Yeah, but from 40 kilowatt hour, you can drive 200 kilometers. It means that the Fino has a consumption of 200 watt hour per kilometer. But this one, uh, based on the numbers, two kilowatt hour and 100 kilometer, is 20 watt hour per kilometer. So this, this electric scooter uh, consumes only one tenth of the energy of the fossil scooter. Similar size, actually this, the fossil scooter is heavier. This is uh, about 78 kilos. Uh, the fossil scooter is 90 something, almost 100. Uh, I don't know why the heck it's so heavy, heavy. But think about it, 10 times more efficient. Uh, so it makes me wonder, what is the efficiency on a fossil scooter? It must be 10%. <laughs> no, I don't know, I don't know really. Because the, the scooter is just slightly less, it consumes slightly less uh, fuel than a, a big ass car like a Prius or something. But yeah, I, I don't know. This is a big mystery for me, but really the electric scooter is just kick ass. It has long range. You can, you can have two people in here. You can, and also it's dirt cheap. 
it costs about one tenth of a fossil when it comes to you know, the energy for charging it up. So I'm going to charge it up now and it's going to cost me about 10 baht. 10 baht is, how much is that? I can't even calculate right now, but I'm going to give you the numbers on the screen. So uh, uh, tomorrow I will, I will uh, review the scooter about how it drives, how it handles. It's getting too hot now, so I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. So yes, uh, I think that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.